All right, guys, so we're back here working on something for Matt, and I'm trying not to get bummed out, man. You know, I mean, in the last month, Matt blew two trainings. Okay. And, dude, he, he no. blew him hard. <laughs> Why, he blew Matt? him hard. But you're never going to believe this. Matt blew a cat. What's up, buds? Welcome back. What are you doing, Twelver? <laughs> Twelvers. Trying to find safety glasses. Trying to find some safety glasses. You know, Steven wears safety glasses no matter what he's doing. Typically, when he's sleeping or uh, bike riding, uh, yeah. tennis playing. Uh, he's really into racquetball. Let's talk about what we're working on. So we got Matt's dumpster, <coughs> dump truck in here. <laughs> yeah. And um, if y'all haven't seen it already, well, Matt bought a dumpster that had a 3126 CAD in it. <clears throat> HEUI, hydraulic actuated electronic unit injector. A lot like a 7.3 or 6.0, it's the same basic principle. And uh, he bought it from some dude in San Antonio. And he told us that day that he got a smoking deal on it. And he's like, man, it was almost too good to be true. And then we went in to get some barbecue and came out and well, it died and it yep. never started again. Yep. So we went by there and uh, it looks like they had thrown a new IPR on it. So this is your injection pressure regulator right here. There's a high pressure oil pump that feeds the injectors. And inside the cylinder head, there's a, there's a log or a hollow casting and high pressure oil fills that um, with oil. And dependent on how much injection pressure it wants to make uh, or that you command, you know, like stepping on the throttle, the ECM interpolates that and says, hey, give me 2,500 PSI at this much pulse width and between the hydraulic pressure and what's called an intensifier piston inside the injector, um, that's what makes the injection pressure. It's basically like one little injection pump on each cylinder. And anyway, they're, they're common to have similar issues like your 7.3s uh, and 6.0s. Um, CAT uses an, an injector driver module that's built into the ECM. It's not separate like on a power stroke. And um, that actually ended up being what the, the problem was when we put a scan tool on the truck um, we saw that we had all six injector circuit codes and that typically only happens um, if you've got a driver problem or um, you've got something else silly going on um, but you can cover cover some bases real quick by putting a scan tool on it and checking for a uh, crankshaft signal you know knowing that the the computer can see the crankshaft signal knowing that you have high pressure oil knowing you have a solid steady stream of fuel we didn't have any air um, you know you can start kind of whittling down what what may be the problem so there happens to be a, a cat dealer in san antonio holt cat we pulled the ecm matt sent one of his guys down there they tested it sure enough driver module is bad and we got the ecm replaced and it runs like a champion so um Anyway, that's rocking and rolling. Uh, didn't notice that Matt was chilling, you know, without any intercooler clamp on this thing when we rolled up on it. So we got a couple things that we're trying to figure out. Steven um, yesterday finished up welding up the bed. This thing had some massive holes in it. So um, we asked Matt, you know, hey, how do you want to fix this? Uh, the cheap way or like the, you want to do a concourse restoration? He's like, cheap. Because... Matt has a lot of stuff going on. It's it's not not hard to spend a whole lot of money working on uh, the all the vehicles and all the trucks and all the stuff that he has. So he's like, look, it's a dump truck. I'm going to use it mainly at the ranch out of Desperado. Y'all just make this thing where it'll hold some base. So um, we cleaned up around the perimeter where the sheets were going to be welded, went and bought some eighth inch and welded the stuff in. So it's not pretty and it's not perfect, but it works perfectly well for what this thing is going to do. We got a little hole up front still that uh, I have to throw a little patch over the top of. But for the most part, this is going to work for hauling stuff around and moving base out there at the Desperado Ranch so he can start building roads and moving stuff around. And and uh, this truck, I think, is going to work perfectly for that. So right about the time we thought we had this thing done, 
we, uh, we're down here adjusting the PTO cable. You can see Stevens having to torch the PTO cable piece off because, well, like everything else on this truck, it fights. And uh, we found out that after adjustment, um, we couldn't get the PTO to completely engage. It would, it would almost engage, but not completely. And so we're looking around and adjusted the, the cable and all that stuff. Make sure everything was good. Put a couple new bolts in the little lever and fulcrum piece that is uh, uh, where the little turnbuckle clevis actually attaches. Tighten everything up, and then when we yanked on the cable, well, it started to pull the sheathing out of the crimp up top. So even though you're moving the cable, the end of it wasn't moving at all. So we've been trying to figure out uh, where we can buy one of these cables at locally and uh, we're kind of having a hard time so we're going to see if we can't get this cable off and maybe repair it at least temporarily with like some hose clamps or recrimp it or something because matt wants a truck and he's got stuff to do and so we're just trying to make it work until uh maybe we can order something in the meantime and then whenever that shows up we'll get the truck back up here and install that piece so um hopefully we'll have a pto cable oh yeah look this is what we got we are frayed out. So when that cable doesn't stay fixed, you can pull on this all you'd like and it doesn't do anything but move this in and out like this. So that's junk. I have to figure out something to make that thing work. But after we get the PTO engaging, that thing's going to split. Um, I do have an update though on Earl. Let's go outside and check that out. All right, so when we left off on Earl, we had just finished putting our stage one Randy 68 in this truck, and it really does work like a champion. This thing shifts awesome, and it's exactly what Matt was asking for. A couple forward gears and one reverse. And after dial in, dialing in the UDT side of the software, we got this thing where it's doing unlock shifts in every gear that we want it to, and lock shifts where we want it, and it moves down the road effortlessly. The converter is so much more efficient than the stock converter and the truck just feels a lot stronger. Um, there really is a lot to be said about a built transmission in a diesel. If, um, if you've ever had any diesel truck, anything with a lockup converter, and you put a built trans in it, um, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, you need to do it. Uh, Randy's is a great place to, uh, to have that done. You can hear us talking a lot about Randy's transmission because we do a lot of business with those guys. They build a really, really good product and um, we've abused their stuff and it works really well. We got the uh, 5R110 coming. Um, just talked to the uh, dude Josh over there at uh, Randy's yesterday and uh, they were wrapping up the transmission for the ranch tank. So that thing's fixing to be back. And we've got some plans for the motor on the ranch tank. If we get can get Matt to commit to put compounds on that thing and a better intercooler and stuff, it's gonna be really awesome. We've been talking to a couple other turbo manufacturers um, about doing some crazy stuff. So we'll see how that all pans out. But that trains is on the way from Randy's as well. And um, we're really, really, really excited about that. But back to Earl. The thing is a freaking beast, man. It is. This truck doesn't have much of, of a tune on it, like 30 horse. Um, but with a trans file and a good trans, it's ridiculous. Y'all remember uh, when we were underneath this thing last time, we saw some kind of goofy stuff, but we've had all that stuff fixed. So. We, uh, we have a drive shaft builder in San Antonio, and we sent the entire drive shaft off to him, said, hey, we got a bend in the back of it, and uh, he just went ahead and went through the whole thing. So they retubed this back section, brand new tube, new Spicer U-joints, new carrier. Carrier bearing is what supports the front part of your two-piece drive shaft, so that's brand new. It's a really important piece. Uh, front U-joint as well. We fixed the housing. This housing, it was actually, the filter was so loose, that's why it was leaking. And uh, so, got a new fuel filter for that. And replaced the underhood filter. And the truck just runs, it runs like a champ. It really does. Moving on to trying to finish up the dump truck. Where are you at, brother? Um, I'm putting the valve cover back on. Well, it's basically on, but I'm putting all the bolts in it and getting it tight. Um, I gotta put the doghouse piece back in it, which is like not fun to get in because it's twice the size of the hole. Yeah. And 
stuff oh, like I that. Have a, I have that patch still on the bed that I need to weld oh, on yeah. the front corner. 10 4. We need to drive this thing just a little bit before he picks it up. I know he's chomping at the bit. Yeah, he's ready to be dump truck operator. Yeah, and that's one of those people that's like, all right, I've driven it 10 minutes and it died. Can y'all fix it? Yeah. All right, so it's ready to go to New York loaded? Yeah. <laughs> Like he, he don't jack around. That's why that dude gets so much stuff done. Come hell or high water or rods out of the block. That dude's just like, all right, bro. Like we, it look like it's mainly there, right? Yeah. Let's go. Yep. He's so. We had an air leak under there, but it was, yeah, what, what was it? It's, um. I have to get in here and bathe with you a little bit. Let me see, let me uh, see that. Uh, uh, <laughs> can you see right there? Uh, uh, oh, hang on. Okay, I'm back. What? You see the light where it's shining? Um. Uh, not really. It's really buried in there. Let me see. Oh yeah, hang on. That there is called a brake pressure air switch. Yeah, I think I'm looking at the right thing. Is With the green, the green thing? connector? Yeah, I think so. It's hard to tell on the camera. I can't really see. Yeah, okay. So that needed to replace because it was, when you pulled the connector out, it shot however much PSI was in the system, shot out the center of the sensor. Nice. So, all right, so we should be done working on Matt's dumpster. Dump truck, I mean. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, so Earl's done. Dump truck's done. Ranch um, Tang is not. Ranch Tang is not. There's old Tang. Sitting there, waiting. But, transmission's on its way from Randy's, so. Got a fender liner, did you do that intercooler? Yeah, buddy. You put a cam in that thing? Yeah, sounds good. Let's go for a ride, bro. Sounds good. You ready? Yeah. All right, so we're still waiting on the PTO cable, so the PTO doesn't work, um, but the cable's gonna be ready on Monday. So, I almost bought you a scout. Oh, no, don't do that. Oh, Matt almost bought you a scout. Anyway, we're waiting on the PTO cable to be here Monday. Uh, actually, we're not waiting on it. Matt said he's gonna do his own. Yep. Well, we think he can hook that up. We'll see. I think he can do it. But, yeah, other than that, got the bed fixed. Made this thing run. Needed a computer. Fixed the uh, pressure sensor under the dash for air. And uh, now it's time to test drive it, make sure everything works, and then ship this thing off to Desperado Ranch so it can go put it some work. Yes, sir. Turd. Also, it's probably the fastest thing Matt owns. <laughs> the dash seen better days. We're almost at the speed limit. Pro really ain't that bad. Dude, it, other than the dash is going to fall in our lap, it actually drives and feels really good. All right, so Matt sent Mikey to San Antonio to pick up our PTO engagement cable, and everything looks great except for, well, one part of it. And um, let me show you what we're dealing with. So got this clevis on this end, and, oh, hold on, camera's down. Yep, oh, 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 there we are. So this end's got a clevis on it, a little cast iron piece, and the one that came off the other end was broken. And well, we said we need to have that one replaced, and 
Well, that didn't happen. So, Matt wants to pick this thing up, and we're trying to make something work. So I went and grabbed a U-joint strap off of a one-ton Dodge, took it out to the vise, and I've this had uh, two little, these were actually bent out this way, because it goes over a U-joint and it bolts to a, a pinion yoke. And so I flattened them out, and uh, I need to drill the hole out, because you can see it's oval now. But this is the right size for that clevis pin to go in. So I'm gonna go out there and lay a piece of stock in between here, like a piece of half inch bar, and fold these ends over, hopefully leaving enough room in the middle. I really need to see, let me see how- Look, it doesn't need to be that thick. You're just going over this plate, which is like an eighth inch. So if you give us a quarter inch in there, okay, then we'll be good. Cause I'm we hook in here and go to here. Yeah. So now I have this. And like Steven was saying, I drill a hole through the back side of this, weld the nut to it, and then that should work as our little pivot clevis. All right, so first things first, before I go drilling anything, I need to make sure that this is deep enough to get to there. And I've got enough room there for when this arm goes to move. That's the whole thing. I need that to be fully engaged, and if it sweeps, it'll line it up, so it's going to work perfectly. That's engaged, right? Okay, yeah, this is going to work. Sweet. All right, let's go drill a hole in this thing, and roll the nut to the back. Okay, dude, uh, move your lever the opposite direction. Okay, I'm free spinning, move it again the other way. Boom, shagalaka, we got a PTO. Baller. All right, now we're finally done with this dumpster. I mean, dump truck. God dang. Long winded some biscuit. Yes, sir. Y'all hear that rain? Dude, we haven't had rain in Texas in forever. This is our rain dance. Dude. So happy to hear the rain. Ah, dang. Oh, yeah. A little rain and ranch thing over there. That'll buff out. Winders are up. Yeah. Someone got the windows up. Dang. It wasn't me. It wasn't me either. Well, somebody did a good job. Someone cares. All right. Now we're finally actually done. So, thanks for watching. Glad you uh, hung in there for the six or seven times that we said goodbye. I don't know if those made the final edit or not. They did. We're sorry about That's that. That's why this video sucks so hard. Yeah. All right. Until next time. 99. Go buy a t-shirt. BunkerBranding.com. Love you. Bye. <laughs>